Hello everybody, this is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 77, where the topic of the week is going to be uh, styling an individual article or styling a post. Uh, writing an article for a site, and then and then and not just using the default template for that article, but uh, you know, looking through the content, looking at the images you're using, seeing what you can do to to jazz up and let the design of the site, the design of what's going on in this article, kind of flow with and enhance the content that you're writing about. Uh, in some ways, this is a trendy thing. A lot of people are doing it um, lately. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's uh, uh, just because trends are trends and they just happen that way or if uh, uh, something set it off, whatever. But it's really more than a trend. It's just a good idea. Uh, and, and it's kind of like... Um, the idea of, of bringing print design into web design. So if you flip through uh, uh, an article in a new in, in a magazine, a print magazine, a nice print magazine too, not just a junk one, and you flip through and there's five major articles in there, each one of those articles will feel a little different the way the images are laid out in that article or the way the text wraps around certain images or the way tables are laid out to, to present some information or... Uh, just different kinds of things like that. Uh, of course, in print design, that that's uh, that's just the way it is. That's just the way that we're used to looking at it. Unfortunately, in web design, it's kind of not. You know, you look at five different posts on an individual website, and there's a good chance that all five of those posts basically look exactly the same. There's something to be said for that for consistency, but that's not to say that we can't have some consistency and have some some individual post styling. So let's get into it a little bit. I'm going to use my own personal blog as an example because I do this a little bit. I don't do it uh, incredibly dramatically. Um, but that's what we're going to use. We're going to kind of do one of those tweener kind of medium post transformations with a brand new article that I have not yet ever posted. So this is my blog. This is the home page. It has my name up here. There's some different sections of the site. A blog is certainly part of this site. So my latest blog entry is available here. The last three articles that I actually have written that have, um, you know, content that I really wrote are listed here and then I also post fairly regularly just links of interest things that I'm sharing and I treat those posts a little bit differently in WordPress because <clears throat> they're just you know not as important as the things that I really write I like sharing content but I like to f to to focus and feature the things that I actually spend time and write on so here's the very latest post that I wrote that I didn't do very much designing on at all it's pretty pretty standard um article styling for my site. So it's called an example of simple winning and here's this device I have in my house that I was like, can you basically guess what this is? And I have a rollover. That now that isn't common. I don't have common CSS styles in my site uh, for this little magical rollover thing. Uh, that's individual CSS styling that I applied just for this post because it made sense for what was going on here. And then, uh, you know, some extra stuff and, and, and some uh, comment stuff going on here. So uh, that's what a really basic blog article looks like on my site. If I click blog, let's go check out that page. It has the two most recent posts that I've posted right here, uh, no matter what they are, if they're just links or writing. And then I have the last uh, six posts that I've posted uh, that are actual writing, and then this is where the link dump goes, and then here's uh, the yearly archive. So the blog page is kind of like an archive. Let's take a look at some other posts, though. Some of them have a little bit more of a transformation than just that, uh, the one we just looked at was. Uh, here's one called Bluegrass is not equal to old time, because that's kind of a part of my life. I have a, <clears throat> you know, I made this first introduction. This is kind of a long written article, so anything that I could do typographically to kind of break things up a little bit but still make it very readable, I was doing. So this intro paragraph is a lot larger. I used some fancy CSS stuff to get um, uh, the text to wrap around her arm here that kind of just draws you down into the text. And then there's a lot of writing that you follow. And there's some, uh, I wanted to post some mp3s in here to illustrate some examples. So there's some stuff going on here that uh, is unique to this post. Uh, and that's about it. 
some reason my little gravitars aren't working here. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if, I mean, that would be a bit of a tangent here, but I wonder if gravitar is down or if, uh, or what's going on there. I'll have to look into that more later. That would be a little, a uh, little bit of a tangent. But normally there's gravitars, you know, the images of people next to here, and they're not loading here. So I wonder if it's something that I screwed up, or if they're having problems, or what. Anyway, so okay, that's a, that's there's a little bit of styling going on here with the with the lady here. That's unique to this post. But let's go back and take a look at a few others. Again, I don't not hugely major transformations here. Here's a post I did about hipsters, where the text is kind of set off in this block, and then uh, you know there's some real live hipsters kind of behind it so that's some unique styling to this post uh, a little bit more bigger of a transformation groove shark and life when i changed the color of the site to be this kind of groove shark blue and have some special uh placement of images here uh, and i changed the logo of my site to include the o of my name and groove shark and uh uh, you know, so this is a little bit bigger of a transformation of the site. You know, the whole site has kind of gone blue just for this site, even a different logo, all that type of stuff. A little bit bigger of a transformation. Uh, maybe this article about a game I used to play. You can see there's a subtle pattern in the background that was maps from this game. And I used some, you know, code that looks like the gameplay. So these 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 posts are just designed up in such a way to really kind of bring out the content that I was writing about when I did it. Uh, so where does this come from? Where's this trend? What's this all about? Well, the whole design community in the world has kind of a design crush on this guy, Jason Santamaria. You probably know him. Maybe you've seen him talk. He's kind of a genius, really great designer. Uh, 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 everybody loves him, and rightfully so. He does this, and he talks about this a lot, so I have no doubt that the trend kind of started with Jason here. This is the article section of his site, so this is what the uh, the homepage of his latest article looks like. But you can see this article looks a bit different, not too drastic, but you see he's flipped up the background color and had a, some styling just for this poem. Uh, here's a, a during the month of October he did these thing called candy grams and had different articles about candy. You can see when he wrote about this particular style of candy, he had some special styling for uh, the image that he dropped in here and pulled some colors for the rest of his site from this image of Botan rice candy. Even had the text fade out a bit towards the bottom, which was kind of a, a unique, cool thing to do. Uh, that references rice paper and look at this dramatic change to a brown kind of thing referencing United States money so he does this he writes an article and then designs his site around that article uh, very cool so there's uh, you know I'm using WordPress and I'm not this isn't specific to WordPress I'm thinking that there's probably tools to get this done in just about any CMS all you need to do is find some way to get custom CMS applied to those individual articles. So maybe there's an easy way in your CMS to just link to uh, a, a C, uh, extra CSS file. You throw that CSS file on your server, link to that, and then override stuff with that, with that CSS file that you've linked to. Since I'm using WordPress, there's a cool tool here that even thanks Jason Santamaria here by... Uh, uh, Noel Jackson or Noel Jackson, probably Noel, huh? Uh, that's a plugin that you can download and install in WordPress. And let's take a look at what it does. So if, uh, I'll just go to my plugins area real quick and see that this, uh, it's called uh, Art Direction right here. Per post styles for new age art direction. So just upload that to your plugins folder and activate it if you're using WordPress. And that will get things going. It doesn't do anything automatically to your site, but what it does is, let's go ahead and add a new post. We'll just call it test, and we'll type some junk into here. And if we scroll down below, you see there's the thing for the expert or the excerpt. There's the thing for the custom fields, and now there's this new thing called art direction. And it says uh, it has some kind of loose instructions here. Uh, it doesn't explain itself very well, but I can explain it to you. Um, insert style tag. So let me just click that, and you can see the the, the inline style tags show up. Like if you're going to put styling in the head of your HTML document to uh, to apply CSS to the page. 
uh, puts those tags in there for us. That's just a handy little button. And then we could type CSS in here, like we could do something with the body or whatever. So let's just hit Save Draft, though, and hit Preview, and let's look at what a, just a typical post looks like on my personal website. It looks like this. It has the big test. That's what we titled it. Here's the content that we added. Here's the comment area. Whatever. This is, uh, this is just the straight-up styling of, of what an individual post looks like. But now that we have this Art Direction plugin, we could say body is um, background white. So let's save that and see what it does first. I'll hit Save Draft. I'm not going to publish this live because obviously this is just junk content. Reload it, and indeed the body of my background of my site is white. Wow. Okay. How is that doing that? Well, let's take a look at view source. So I'm using Safari here and I'll open the view source window and we'll take a look. This is a, uh, you know, I'm using HTML5 on my website. This is all the header stuff and all the stuff that it links to. Towards the bottom, before this closing head tag, uh, you'll recognize this little chunk here is the little chunk that we wrote and added into our art direction plugin box. So right at, it, 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 it looks for, in our theme, this little function called WP head, which you don't have to worry about too much. You just need to know that the text that we write in that box gets inserted into the head section of this website, and it's after where it links to the CSS file for this theme. So anything written in here, uh, even if it's the same CSS selector, will overwrite the default stuff from the style sheet. So because we've declared um, our background as something else in the theme, we declare background as white here, the white overrides it, and that's why uh, this, this is happening. So uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's just we just we're just doing a quick little test there. Although, what we're going to do here is style a post that I kind of already have prepared and prepared some images for uh, from scratch, kind of. So that's the plugin. But like I said, I think in other CMSs you can you can either write in some way to do it or find a plugin that's similar to this. This isn't all that fancy. All it's doing is just putting a little box in the post window that inserts anything you put in that box up into the head section. That's all it does. It does very little. It's not that big, robust, complex plugin. So we'll delete our test post because that was just to show you what was going on here. I, uh, I have written a post that I intend to style up with you guys today called the Safari Challenge. So I'm going to click on that to edit it in WordPress, and I've already written this post. So that's kind of an important part. I think if you're going to be styling a particular post, it, it doesn't hurt to think about uh, this, how you might want to style that post as you're writing it, but don't think too hard about it. You know, Try not to distract yourself too much from the writing of the article. Perhaps you should just write the article uh, without any kind of other distractions, then go back and look through the article and then start gathering images and thinking about uh, uh, things that, that, that can help bring this article, this writing that you now have done to life. So, <clears throat> there is no, let me close up some of this stuff. There is nothing in our art direction land yet. So if I hit save draft, make sure that you know we have the most latest thing. I didn't change anything, so it should be fine. And hit preview. We're going to look at the absolute default styling for this article that I've written called the Safari Challenge. Just a tiny bit of background. I just took it upon myself to decide to only use the browser Safari last week instead of being a, a Firefox. I've been just traditionally a Firefox guy, uh, which is kind of what this talks about and and that I like Firefox and I like the tools in Firefox but there's something to be said for Safari too it's uh, I find it faster I find it more stable it has better CSS3 support and and really I should be able to use a browser that 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 you know so many other people in the world use and have no problems with it has good developer tools blah 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 that's what this article is about it's about my experience of a week of using Safari exclusively and not you know not cheating at all and going back to Firefox for certain things, just forcing myself to use it. So uh, I was like, oh, text selection I found to be a pain, and 
Oh gosh, what's going on here? Thought there was a few more images. <laughs> That's a little weird. I have a bunch of images dropped in here already, so I'm like just looking through, kind of surprised that I'm not seeing them, but some of them are showing up, but just not all of them. But we'll be able to figure that out, I'm sure. Uh, blah blah blah. There's it's it's a, you know it's not super long, but it's a fairly long article, and we want to do what we can to bring out the coolness, make this article look even more interesting than this design already does. So let's uh, first of all figure out. Okay, we have this intro paragraph, and then I've linked to an image here, and it's at my website. Uh, da, 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 and I've given it a class of full width image. We'll get to all this stuff later, but why isn't it showing up here? Uh, this is an instance where, oh, there it is. For some reason, it just decided to show up now. I have this big old image of the different things, and there's some images. I don't know why they weren't loading before. Anyway, you notice all this stuff is kind of on white. When I was Googling around, you know, I was trying to find big icons of, of Safari and Firefox, because that's kind of what this article is about, and I was going like, uh, Safari icon 512, just kind of knowing that 512 is the maximum pixel size for uh, icons in OS X, and I don't really know. Well, there it is. Maybe that's the one I ended up using. Uh, that's cool. And I would grab these things and I'd be like, well, this is a JPEG, so it's not alpha transparent. So I kind of, in general, look for alpha transparency because my site is uh, light on dark, has this b black background. It's better for me if I can, uh, you know, work in alpha transparency. This is on white, so I would have to, you know, painstakingly cut this out. And even then, if I was, even if I was really careful, it does kind of lose some of these uh, natural, nice shadows that the designer already has. I mean, look, this isn't just a drop shadow. Look at this little white uh, stuff going on in here. That's kind of light reflecting and 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 doing different things in the shadows. They they did good work on this shadow stuff. So this has kind of got, got me thinking about already when I was kind of gathering these images, maybe we should make this post, this whole post on white instead of, you know, just, we'll just change the design of my site to be on white instead of on dark. So that's what was the genesis of that background white stuff we got going on. So let's get started there. I have this big image that's, you know, kind of the exact width of my whole content area here. Let's get started with that. Um, we'll insert some styling and we'll say it's not the, it's not the body I think in, in how I use this. I put, I have that background image applied to the HTML element for whatever reason. So let's check out that save and reload. And now, so we should have this bar stay cause that's the body actually is this background bar. So that's the site on white. And for some reason, sometimes the image likes to load and sometimes it doesn't. So now see this on white thing is just working a lot better. It's nicer. But we now we have problems with, okay, the logo for my site doesn't show up. The, the text up here for my site doesn't show up. This text is far too light. You can't even see the header. Uh, what's going on with the date here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's lots of stuff that we need to fix if we intend to stick with this on white stuff. And I like the on white idea, so that's what we're going to be going with. Uh, we can bust out the web inspector here and just start kind of maybe fixing them one by one. Let's hit inspect element on the title. That's an H2 with an ID of single title. And we can see that we've set the color to white right there. So if I remove that, then it would be the default body color. But uh, single title, an ID of single title. So this is where we might start going in and going... A uh, single title has a color of black. And let's save draft and see how that works. And refresh things. And there, now, now our title is showing up nicely. That looks nice and bold. I kind of like that. But the more we go along here, there's a lot of stuff. Just changing that background to uh, white it's going to cause a little, kind of a chain reaction. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be changed that needs to be dealt with this site being on white. So I'm thinking 
maybe we should be smart here and try to make this as reusable as we can. What if I want to do a site a month from now and I want to I want to use this white styling too. I want to make this stuff as reusable as I can. There's probably some stuff down here in this article that doesn't really need to be reusable and we'll get to that stuff and that stuff we'll use that art direction plugin for we'll, we'll do this some this this inline css for but um what we can do here is we don't need to just just use this just for inline styling basically it's not inline styling but you know like in page header styling we can put anything we want in here we could put javascript in here we could link out to other files here and that's exactly what we're going to do let me paste in this code here we're going to link out to a css file on my website already called white.css that's the reusability that we're going for here i'm just going to make a, a set of styles that overrides all that light on dark stuff with dark on light stuff um, in that so that just that portion will be reusable so let's hit save draft and that's not going to do anything we'll reload the page and you'll see that uh, nothing really has changed here but if we open up coda we have this css folder this is the root directory of my site i'm going to make that file come on so if you've been watching the screen fast for a long time you know that no matter what, during the screencast, everything is slow. In my regular life, that would have just been like mm, instantaneous. Because I'm doing a screencast, it decides to take five extra seconds. There's white.css, and it's in this direct. It's in the the directory that 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 um, this is pointing to. Slash CSS slash white. CSS. So anything that we write in here, this stuff, we'll steal it away. X. Let's hit save. Jump over to Coda. Paste. And hit save. Now for the last time here, I'll reload the page and you'll see that nothing has changed. Again. But, so, oh, oh yeah, I was like, where's the, oh, that's an image of the web inspector, not the web inspector. That freaked me out. Now this black color is being set in our CSS file on our server instead of being injected into the head. So we can, this is where we're going to put all of our reusable styles and in WordPress we'll put all the styles that are just really kind of specific to that post that we don't really intend to be reusable. So there's a number of other things that we kind of intend to be black. So let me just do a little copy and paste so we don't go on forever and ever. And I'll paste some stuff in here. So I've decided that on in the white version of my theme, that header is going to be black. Links are going to be black. My H3s, which are, are, are headers in the middle of the article, are going to be black. My slogan up top is going to be black. And some stuff in the footer is going to be black. So that's going to be... Uh, pop off some of the stuff that's going to be black. Um, there's a few things that are going to need to be white then down in the footer. I'll pop those things in quick and then we'll just leave that at now. Now let's go jump into the post and reload and you'll be able to see some some progress. Uh, we can see my slogan is, is or not slogan, but whatever it is, my kind of what I do has popped back in. As we scroll down here, we can see, hopefully see some some progress. Oh, that's that's not quite right yet, but our, we can see our headers are, are much more readable now. And if we get all the way down to the footer, you can see that this uh, these were kind of lost before. My kind of friend list and my favorite tweets and stuff were kind of kind of dead. But we have resurrected them now. We have much more work to do yet, though. Let's see. This is too light. For one thing for sure so let's get on that right now and there's some stuff in the footer too that uh, could have benefited from some darker color let's just say the generic color for our whole body is kind of a darker gray now so that will fix uh, the default text color all over the place 
Uh, we need to definitely need to deal with that logo. But one of the big things was links. Let's just look quick. See all the links. So we'll go down for some links. This really works really nicely, I think, on the dark theme. But obviously, that's quite a disaster on the light theme. So I have some stuff to override a lot of what's going on with the links. So let me drop that in there, too. It just gets rid of all that rounding and background and transition stuff and just reapplies a more basic link style. Let me reload. Hopefully it'll take us right back to this link. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, it bolds it and has a, a an underline. So that's just a more normal link style. I didn't think that the, the big rounded corners thing was working on this in this dark on light theme. So we're doing pretty good here. And notice the text is a nicer color here. Notice in the in the footer, we've kind of come back to life with some readability. Uh, our links are looking good. Our headers are looking good. So w this is a big transformation. I mean, look at this is really coming together here as far as, as all of a sudden my site is white and it was black a minute ago with just this much CMS. Uh, one of the things people ask me about all the time is very simple CSS trick to change the selection color. Now this only works in Safari and Firefox as far as I know. Um, but this color, it works great on the dark, but it's kind of weird on the light theme. So I replace that with a light, a much more chill yellow and black, um, for when you select text, that's a thing that you can do in CSS. So what about this logo? Um, let's just kind of keep it simple. You know, uh, uh, what I want to have is black for the logo. Let's see. Can I inspect? Let's let inspect that element, which will show me that I have a background URL going on here. Let's see. Um, copy link maybe, and we'll make a new tab. So that's what my logo looks like in the theme. I'll download it. Let's drag it right to the desktop. Let's open it in Photoshop. Now, what I could do is open up the original Photoshop file for this theme and, and just do something different there and output a file of this, uh, of this same size or even a different size and adjust it. But I'm thinking what I want to do is make the text black. And what about that underline? Well, here's my idea. Invert the colors. Command I does an invert. Let's do Command One, so we're looking at it at full size. So the orange turned to a blue, that the whites turned to a black, and I'm like, cool, let's do it. <laughs> so I already have that file available. I have this. I have some stuff that I prepared, kind of graphics-wise, in this folder. Here was the original logo. Here's the logo on white, which is all I did. Literally, was open it in Photoshop, press Command I, invert the colors, and just you know. Not everything you do has to be fancy, you know. I think that that uh, was already working, if you ask me. So there's one more CSS rule we'll add to our white.css, which is to just change the background image to a logo, and we'll we just call it logo dash on white, and hit save. And if we come back here and reload what we got going. That should apply, and I kind of like the blue color. You know, there's this, there's a lot of kind of grayscale going on here, and that kind of breaks it up a little bit with some blue. And it happens to be a blue that's kind of close to the Safari blue. Well, this image is really bizarre. It just shows up just when it feels like it. Like not that time. Where's the image? So strange. Well, some of the images show up some of the time, right? This kind of, some of the blues we're using are, are reflected in that blue. That's my whole point here. I don't know what's going on with the image not showing up, but <clears throat> nothing we can do about it. Let's just keep plugging on here. So some of the stuff that I've already done here is I've already marked up this post with HTML how I traditionally mark up posts. So if there's an image in my thing, I just drop in an image. You'll see it has a class name applied to it so we can... Uh, do certain stuff, but uh, headers, you know, like why go Safari? That's a header of the article I was writing. Uh, I put H3 tags around it. That's just the standard I have set up, and it's just a generally a good standard for writing an article. Um, I list three things, so I put them in an ordered list. So the markup for this thing is kind of already done. Uh, that I'm let's you know let's get on with exploring the differences text selection now that's one of the differences so I have h3 tags and then I start writing about that uh, uh, and I have an, an image again that I've I have the same class name applied to this image and the reason for that is 
I wish we could figure out what's going on with those images. These particular images, notice their width is 875 pixels wide, which is, and if we bust out Command Shift 4 on a Mac, oh, gets our little screencast cursor up. That's the exact width of this white content area that I got going on here. That's my, my full width. So occasionally I want to make use of that entire 875 pixels. Um, but if I were to just drop this image in, you see the text starts here. So I have that class name set up called Full Width Image. And what that does, essentially, is just kicks it over to the left enough that it fits perfectly. So you know how we've made a CSS file now for this white, and we've made, we're have made we going to use some inline CSS down here to, to fix up some stuff. Well, additionally to that, let me, let me drill down to my theme. I have some class names set up um, for things that are available at all times in any post. I'll open the style.css for my whole theme. You can see kind of how I write a little bit here. I'll scroll down. Let's see, fancy formatting, not really fancy, but these are a bunch of reusable styles that I have ready that I could use on any post. There's not that many of them. That's why they're kind of in the generic CSS file. So remember, remember that class name, full width image? All it does is kick the margin over 120 pixels. So if I could get this thing to load images, really do a shift refresh here man hmm okay well it loaded that time uh, uh, let's do an inspect element you can see that this image has this full width image on here and this full width image class is applied with a margin left of 120 pixels if that wasn't there if I uncheck this see it it, uh, it shares the same margin here as the text so <laughs> Excuse me. I don't like that. I wanted it to, in my de design in my head for this thing, I wanted it to kind of be flush here and see the Safari challenge. That looks real nice, doesn't it? And we use that again right down here with text selection. I made an image that was fully 875 pixels wide that illustrates one of the points and issues I have with using Safari and I dropped that whole thing in as an image and applied that class to kick it over to the left so it sits in there quite nicely. Uh, you might be yelling at me already, look at this text and images, shouldn't this be web text? Yeah, probably it should be, I don't know. I just thought it looked kind of nice, it allowed me to use a font and I was careful to uh, make the same point that I was making in the image in the alt text. So in case you can't see images, uh, it still kind of makes the same point as I was trying to make. So here's another H3 tag for developer tools, yada, yada, yada. Here's me talking. Here's the image. Here's a class called stick to left. Now that's one of the, the reusable themes um, in my thing. Look, that's the exact same. Hmm. I guess I didn't really need a. I just think of it in a different way. I think, because uh, the point of you know it has the exact same CSS property. Why didn't I use full width image there too? Uh, it's because it wasn't a full 875, and I just I guess in my brain I was just thinking about it slightly differently. Like uh, maybe I want to wrap text around it or something. I don't know. But that's this web inspector image here. You can see it kind of ends just shy of the end there. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so then there's this uh, things I, you know, it shows the web inspector. We've been using the web inspector in this screencast. You can see I was flying around in an okay. I'm, I'm comfortable now with the web inspector. It's basically, um, a, you know, I don't know if you want to call it a ripoff, whatever, but generally you, when you think of these tools, you think of Firebug and Firefox. And that's a great tool. I'm really comfortable in that but I've been just getting more comfortable with the web inspector. Anyway, so I, in my article here, I'm writing about things that I don't like about web inspector and things that I do like about web inspector. I'm thinking that the way that this text is uh, portrayed right here isn't doing a very good job of that. I mean, it's, it's doing, you know, fine, but I'm thinking kind of uh, doing a two-column thing, you know, so you can kind of uh, um, uh, browse the th one things on the left, you know, like a pros, cons list. I think in my head of those things as being one on the left and one on the right. So uh, we're going to do that, and that isn't necessarily something that would be used 
in a lot of posts. I wouldn't go ahead and throw that in the main style sheet, the styling to do a left-right list like that. Uh, so, and I wouldn't even put it in white.css either because it really doesn't have anything to do with this with this styling information, which is to make my theme dark on light. That CSS we're going to put down here in this post-specific CSS. Um, let's see. Looks like pretty much all of this is for that. So take a look here. There's list left, float left, list right, float right. Um, if it's a list, it's a width of 49%. Just try a 50 so they'll sit next to each other okay. Uh, the wrap that goes around both of them sets overflow to hidden so the float will be cleared. It needs a little extra width uh, because it wasn't quite fitting in my little area. Uh, I set some colors and font sizes and stuff. You'll see those same uh, uh, class names applied here. There's a list wrap that lists them both. Then there's the left list and the like list. You know, I don't know, it <laughs> looks confusing right now, but there's, there's rhyme to all this reason. Uh, for example, they share, both the lists share this class name, like list, but then they have a unique class name as well. So for example, I set the width with this because they're the same width. If you're, if you're applying CS process properties, you know are going to be the same. The things should, Instead of replicating that property in the CSS and giving them both a width of 49, we'll apply a similar class name and set the width only once in the CSS. That's just how I think about CSS. I think that's a smart way to go. So uh, you saw all the classes, whatever. If I hit save draft now and I reload the page, let's look at the results of that CSS. And kind of putting these lists, hopefully nicely side by side underneath that image of a web inspector. <sighs> if we didn't ruin it. <clears throat> okay, so the titles now are dark black, so they're kind of set off a little bit. Things I don't like, things I do like, with you know, whatever the uh, and the and the pros cons set up. Just how I was kind of thinking about it in my head. So nice. Let's keep moving on. Developer tools. There's our lists. We're getting there. Getting there. Um, here's a section I wrote on little UI differences. Um, Again, this is a really wide images, so I'm using this stick to left CSS class, which kicks it over and makes it flush left with the left content area of my site. Um, that is, if this loaded properly, pretty much a full width image where I'm pointing out a few about the weird placement of UI things in these two browsers. Um, then we're talking about RSS and how I, some, you know, long story short, I don't love how Safari handles RSS. Another really wide image. So we're rolling a lot with pretty wide images here. Uh, this was too wide to, to fit this left margin here, so I did kind of stick it to the left, but it has a shadow, so it's not quite cut off here. Uh, blah, 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 large image. Make sure to set the alt text this way. Uh, you know, we're kind of just doing some repetitive stuff here, but haven't we made good progress in making this kind of a, 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 a the content of, that this article is talking about work for this article? The, the design works for the content. I think, you know, I mean, maybe it's not the most successful example of it on Earth, but it's doing a pretty good job. Um, there's, a, ooh, there's another thing. Uh, uh, let's see, what is that? Jut from left is one of our CSS classes that I have available for all articles. Jut from left, it floats it to the left and uses this negative 120 to stick it to the left. Uh, make sure it's a block or whatever, so text will wrap around it. Uh, the result of that being, uh, well, this is stuck to the right and floated to the right. So that makes sure that that you know the text is, is doesn't get pushed down. This is floated over here, so I, I I do enjoy that combination of floating something to the right and giving it a negative right margin, which just uh you know it basically doesn't affect this text. Uh, it just kind of makes it hang out over here. Uh, I don't know. I probably didn't explain that well enough, but so jut from right, jut from left. We're using these different things. Having a bunch of links. 
I think that about covers it, you know? So if we just kind of start at the top and look here, compared to um, looking at an article like like um, this example of simple winning here or whatever, this is a much more traditional. It looks like most of the rest of my site looks. If you look at my contact page, if you look at my portfolio, if you look at my speaking page, mostly the site looks like this. It has this consistent light on dark feel. But if we go back all the way up to this, this totally dramatic different change, but it still kind of feels like my site. It still has the same layout. It still has the same fonts. It still has the same navigation. But we just, we just changed up some of the colors, some of the feel of the site to accommodate for some of these images that we are finding and stuff like that. So we go through there. It's nice, you know, like, you know, Safari versus Firefox. It really brings that on home. Oh, my gosh. What's going on? Apparently, previewing isn't the most stable thing in WordPress for me on this particular server tonight. <clears throat> And it just sells the deal. The text selection. There's an examples of what's going on. This white thing is working. I don't know. I, I've I've explained all this stuff. No need for me to explain it 20 times in a row. But uh, I I hope you kind of agree that the end result here is is a lot different than the original site and works better. This is the idea of art directing an individual post. Uh, I, so I guess we'll just kind of leave it at that. So uh, until next time, folks. I'll see you later. Goodbye.